Hello and welcome to another budget and Lego video. Now we have a 2004 Renault Laguna 1.6 petrol and nothing's happening. So we have no ignition lights. All we have is the uh, immobilizer light flashing. We have two keys and all I know is the customer said he was driving it, no problem, parked it up, came out the next morning and nothing happened absolutely nothing happened so as he was driving it was absolutely perfect and then nothing so at the end of the day it is a Renault so it could be anything I asked him how many keys he's got he said he's got two so I told him to bring them both down because these do have key problems these have a lot of problems the chances of both keys going at once at exactly the same time is very very remote we do have the key actually works as regards the lock you know the open and, and unlock we have a radio i think it doesn't sound great but yeah so we have a radio um but that's it so i put the key in as you normally would now one thing to note we do have lights here which is kind of you know just something to note so we do have the lights there and we have the mobile light flashing i put the key in there is a click as regards the key, you know, you, you push it past the click on the uh, card reader. And as you can see, nothing happens. So my foot on the clutch, pressing the start button, and absolutely nothing is happening. Take out the key, put the other key in. And same thing again, absolutely nothing. So... Right, but one thing I can't hear is, as I put the key in, I should, after I press it into the second position, which is this, I should hear the steering lock unlock, and I'm not hearing the steering lock unlocking. Now, I'm going to have to get a wiring diagram out, but I'm pretty certain the power has to go to the steering lock to get our ignition lights working. That's how I'm sure the system works. But we'll pull out a wiring diagram in a minute and we'll see. But there is a definite click there, which is good. So there's a definite click. That key is a bit dodgy. Oh, this key's all opened. So that's why it's not going in very well. But there is definitely a click there. So what I'm going to do... is we're going to pull out a wiring diagram, see how this system works, and we'll go from there. Sorted. But now I've looked at the wiring diagram, I'm going to kind of take my diagnosis in a slightly different route. This is where it's good to know how the system actually works. So here is our steering lock, and here is our card reader. Now, as you can see in our card reader, we have two switches. Now, these switches are normally closed. You can tell that by the, from the diagram. So we have position one on our um, key and position two. So that's the same as if you were turning it by hand, you know, position one, position two. That's what these are for. So position one here, position two here. And that's all basically we've got in there. We've got a couple of, we've also got a couple of transistors, but that's essentially what it is. So, and as we can see from the wiring diagram, hopefully you can see all this now, we have pin number eight is our earth. Now, that's a shared earth between our steering lock and our card reader, and it's a chassis earth, so we can check our earth. We can also check where is our fuse. 10 amp, F -fu uh, 10 amp F2, that's in the fuse holder, and that is pin number two, so that should be permanently live. And then we should have an earth here. Now, as we can see from position two, so once we click it in all the way, it then opens up this circuit, which is pin number five, which then comes in. We'll ignore this module for the minute, but then it comes in and it goes into our ignition lock and it powers our ignition lock. So we need to make sure first 
that we have this card reader is actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, that we've got powers and grounds to it, and when we click it into the second position, it's going to then send a power out and then power our steering lock. So before I kind of initially thought maybe it's a steering lock problem, but after looking at the wiring diagram, gives you a bit more detail and a kind of bit more where to go. You know, very simple, we can see, like I said, our two positions. Once we get to position two, that then sends power to our uh, steering lock, which then turns on our steering lock, which then comes back out here, turns on our ignition lights and does everything we need to do. Then we have also here, where is it? Then we also have our uh, push button start here, but we won't worry about that yet until we see exactly what's going on with our card reader. So, you know, wiring diagrams in you know certain cases is, a, is, is brilliant because it can kind of give you a place to start because I initially was kind of thinking maybe steering lock. Now it still can be our steering lock. It can be our card reader. It can be our push button. It can be, you know, it can be loads of things. But because we've got, you know, no ignition lights, we can't put any scan tools or anything here. The first thing I'm going to look at is the first protocol, which is our key reader, our card reader. And we are really concentrating on position two on our ignition here. So this is essentially, like I said, imagine this is a big switch. That's all it is. You know, you, you put your key into ignition. In this case, it's a card. You click it to the first, you know, position, click it to the second position, and that's just done by pushing the card in. And then once it's into the second position, as we can see, this circuit comes live, which is pin number five, which then comes, oh, comes back into our steering lock. So, we have direction now, uh, we have all our pinouts, we have our colours if we need to. So I'm going to be checking grounds, and well powers and grounds, and then I'm going to be checking, so that's pin number two and eight, and then I'm going to be checking pin number five, and then we kind of, we'll go from there. Sorty! The card reader, because it's actually a lot easier. Let's just get this out, I'll try and do this on camera. I'm losing light fast, so hopefully I can kind of do this fast. Right, so there we go. I need to get pin 8 on there, which is going to be my earth. Then I need to get pin, what did I say again? Pin 2, which is going to be our power supply to it. Then, if they're okay, we need to check pin 5 to make sure it's kicking out the power to the steering lock. Is that it? Simple, people. It really is simple. So pin 8 is our earth. Pin two is our power coming into the module, you could say from the car. And then when we slide the key in, it then switches over to pin five, which then sends power to our lock. And it's just gonna be easier, I think, to test it from here. If this is okay, then we have to go to the lock. And then, well, it could be then and then and then after that. So let's see what this does. Let me get the camera set up a lot better and we'll go from there. Right, okay people, I've got this. Don't do this, I'm only doing this because I'm really struggling to hold the camera. I'm losing light, I'm trying to do this quickly and also trying to get a video out, you know, the joys. So I'm connected to pin two and pin eight. So if I put this here and once I touch the test light to this other one, this should light and this will tell me if I've got a good power and ground coming to the actual key card um, slot. And there we go, look at that. Absolutely perfect. So we know our powers and grounds coming to this module, coming to the module is absolutely fine. So what I want to do is I need to get to, or is it pin two? Because when you put the card in, it sends power to pin two, which then sends power to our door lock, uh, to our steering lock. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put back probe pin two. Oh, I also forgot I did disconnect this from the cover. So as you can see, this is the cover that comes with it. Once you take the cover off, it's actually marked. It's labeled in, inside this black case here what the numbers are so that's how i did it that just slides into there but i couldn't back probe it until i took out that and you just take out that plate first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to now put this on pin two i'm going to have to shove it back into the card reader 
put the card in and then pin two should light up so let's see what happens there okay like i said this is just so awkward i've got the connection back in and back probed on pin five i've got the key or the card in the card reader and like i said just imagine this as a big switch as i put the card in it switches over puts power through pin uh, five which then powers our lock so what i'm doing now is I've got my test light to uh, positive, uh, or negative, sorry, to a ground. And once I touch this, this should light up. Aha, look at that. It's not lighting up. That should light up, which then sends power to our lock. So people, oh, it's come out. It looks like we have a problem I've lost my pin with the card reader right so let me think what can i quickly do it's a 12 volt system oh i know what i can quickly do i now i'm gonna get yes right give me a couple of minutes and i'm gonna set something up and i'm gonna see if what i think is correct lovely before i do this i'm going to warn you know your system before you do this because you can cause well you well you can destroy the car cause thousands of pounds thousands upon thousands of pounds worth of damage what i'm going to do is i've got my power probe it's a snap and one but it is a power probe and i'm going to put voltage to that pin which then we should hear the steering lock click so um let's just Oh, there we go. Look at that. Now, if we look at the dash. As we can see, the dash is lighting up. Oh, I've just got a dodgy connection. And you're not going to be able to see it, but you're able to hear it. So there we go, people. We have a problem with the card reader. Now, how can I press this button Hold the camera and do everything at the same time. All right, people, it's not great, but you're going to get the idea. I'm going to touch the power onto this. Make sure it's out of gear, which it is. Touch the power onto this. We have ignition. There we go, people. Now, so that's the problem. We have a problem with the car reader. Now, is it a problem where it's just, it's not recognizing the key going in? Or is it a problem that it is recognizing the key going in, but it's not sending out the power? So we're gonna crack this baby open and we're gonna see what we can do with it. But there we go. We have ignition. Now, if I turn this off, this shouldn't start again. Right, so it's now off. Oh, of course, because the key's still in it. So what I'm going to do is, we'll turn it off. We'll take the key out. So the key's now out. I'm really sorry about the dodgy camera work, but hopefully you get the idea. So I just took the key out. I'm going to slide it back in. We heard no... No door... Uh, no... I keep saying door lock. No steering lock. My foot on the clutch. Press the button absolutely nothing so there is our problem right so as you can see the red tab at the back something is broke and we can kind of hear it so can we fix this and can we fix it good enough so it's gonna actually stay fixed that's the that's the thing now uh, this should open up quite easy ish No, I said that. It's not going to. All these plastic clips, we have to be careful. Should really get something better than what I'm using. Here we go. Use a knife, that's it. One off. Hmm. 
Now, nah, look what's just hopped out. I think that's going to be our problem. Yeah. I see the switch, but what I'm going to do is take off PCB first. Hopefully I should be able to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And there we go. Now, you can see these two red switches. Position one, position two. And they're both broke, but I'm not worried about position one I'm really worried about this one theoretically well not theoretically I can go back in the car plug this in put that close to it just press that red button and it's going to start right I'm on my phone again just because I thought I'd quickly show you this as you can see the key is in and nothing happened just see that little red thing in the middle the bottom of the card there now you can kind of see it there we go that red switch watch this if I get this in there this is just gonna be awkward now to film this I need to push that switch down I need to get the screwdriver in there now see that just push the switch down which is turned on my ignition oh And there we go we can start it so we'll strip this open and we'll see if we can fix it see if we can do something with it and uh, yeah but there we go that's all it is lovely it is gonna start but we obviously need to put it in here so it all still works now we have the plastic bit that broke off, but where did it actually break off from? Was it this end? No, it's here. So it broke off. Let's get some tweezers. These self-gripping tweezers are fantastic. Right, so that's actually, or the other way around, I think it should be. Should be that way around? Yeah, that's the way around it should be. That is broken off from there. It's as simple as that. But I'm just thinking now, can I make this strong enough to where it's going to actually do what it needs to do? Because this still has to flex. See? This is the bit I'm talking about. As you put the card in, this pushes up and actually hits the button on the PCB. Now, this has to be strong enough not to break, but also it has to be able to lift up and down. So it does need a bit of play. I'm just thinking, is it going to be easier just getting a replacement using this but getting a replacement one of these because I just don't want the hassle of the customer coming back because this is um, broke again. So let me have a think about it and we'll turn the camera back on and I'll see I'll see what I can do. If it was my own car I would fix it, I wouldn't really care but it's annoying for the customer having to come back, you know, and especially with the same problem, it can kind of get, you know, well, you, you told me you fixed it, you know, the usual. So, um, I just don't know what's best at the minute. 
I could put maybe a piece of metal there, strap it to it. It should be strong enough. Let me have a think. Right, I have an idea. I'm going to melt it back on, and I'm going to actually repair it with cable tie. So what I'm going to do is, I've got my soldering iron. I'm going to place this. I'll try and zoom you in, but the problem is I'm going to get in the way. Hopefully you can see that, but my hands might get in the way. So I'm going to replace. I'm going to place this back on here. I might just have to do just a little bit off camera first, so I know I get it in the right place. So all I'm essentially doing is melting it back into place. Oh, you can't see. Melting it back into place, and then if I get exactly right I'm gonna put it in there so then I get some get a cable tie and melt the cable tie into it so it basically gives me it's like glue but it gives me more of a pad for it to stick to so hopefully you can see this I just need to maybe get that there a bit um, Oh, this is awkward to do this on camera. Anyway, you can see what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it off camera because I need this closer to me. Once I get it and get um, cable tie melted in and around there, we're going to see if it's going to work, if it's going to be strong enough, and we'll take it from there. Right, hopefully you can see that it's actually worked, but I still don't know if I'm really happy with it to be honest. As I'm pushing down that, I'm moving all this, so I know that there's a really, as you can just see that, really good connection there. And the card kept open up, so I just put a bit of masking tape on there. But as I slide the card in, you can see this little plastic piece does lift up. Just see, maybe go to the side. See that's lifted up? As I slide the card out, see that goes down? And that goes up, now down, and up. Oh. Yeah. Now I've done that a good few times. And it seems to be okay. But do I really want to trust it? This is the problem. Like I said, if it was my own car, I wouldn't care. Customer's car. You know, this is where it becomes a problem. Fix it, you know, kind of cheap for them. But then they could come back and it's going to be the same problem so they think you haven't done it properly. Do you just, you know, go down the second-hand route. We can still use this PCB so we're not, we, you know, we don't need anything special. We can just plug it in and done. But the second-hand one, is that going to break? This new is going to be very expensive. This is just the tricky part of the job. Now, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to test this a few more times and I think I'm going to put it back and I'm going to tell the customer what we've done and leave it up to him. That's going to be the best thing, I think. If he wants to get a new one, I'll price up a new one, I'll price up a second-hand one for him and, yeah, you know, he can kind of go from there himself. Now, we don't have the first ignition switch. is still a bit dodgy because the thing is gone. I'm not going to repair that one. Uh, that's not going to cause us an issue. That'll only cause us an issue if we're trying to program a car, um, a, a card. But we're not programming the card. The cards are still working. We just want to try and uh, get the thing started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all this back together. We'll put it in the car, and oh, they see it. it's just, it's just, just the keys are just gone. And we'll go from there, people. Sorry. Don't ask me why, but I didn't film the end of the video just completely forgot but as you can see from when I actually put the screwdriver in the ignition it did start it's been going for over a couple of weeks not had a problem so there we go it fixed it it's done sorted simple as that and there we go people so look over helps all the usual don't forget thumbs up like share subscribe links up here links down below but most importantly don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted